Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, my name is Mason Henderson. You can call me Mason or Brock because I'm kind of a video game nerd and my middle name is Brock and Pokemon. Yeah. So, since it's fall, um, it's the return of a lot of things. American football, um, whether it's NFL or college. Uh, real football, which I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for. Uh, oh well. And, uh, of course, TV shows. Uh, fall premieres are happening, about to happen. Uh, it's a lot of fun to get into shows and just really enjoy them. And I have several that I try to keep up with. So, thank God for TiVo. Um, so, we're going to start off with my first show of the week, I guess. Uh, Monday nights come around, and Monday was awful. So, TV shows happen at night. And uh, this is uh, also happens to be probably the most controversial show that I watch, uh, Gotham. And controversial mainly because it kind of, the reception is very, very different. Um, I've heard everything from, I absolutely hate it, to, it's just not that good, to, you know, eh, the story sucks. And I've heard very little good about it, um, and I'm just going to recap the first season really fast, um, because I actually kind of enjoyed the first season. Uh, the story didn't grip me, um, you know, because th obviously this is before Batman, so you know what characters are and are not going to die. Um, and so it, it, it felt a little phoned in. It felt like, you know, oh, well, there's that character, oh, there's that character, oh. Uh, so it, it does make sense why a lot of people did not like it. Um, but the main thing that really got me was the acting, because the acting is really phenomenal, um, aside from one or two performances. Uh, Robin Lord Taylor nails the Penguin. Uh, he is just, he's easily the best actor on that show for the first season. Um, guy playing Jim Gordon, uh, Ben McKenzie, he does a really good job portraying like a young you know, Jim Gordon. Uh, you know, just really upstanding, doesn't want to do anything wrong, um, doesn't want to give in to the evil that Gotham, uh, you know, really tries to push on everyone, um, gets stuck in some bad situations. His partner, uh, Harvey, you know, just really, he's that down and out cop that just wants to get by. He doesn't want to ruffle any feathers, he just wants to do his job and that's it. Um, and then even, you know, Bruce and Alfred, you know, they had a very good you know, butler, um, re owner relationship, um, and you can really see where, you know, they could grow up and become Bruce and Alfred, and I really like the dynamic that they, uh, they put there with them, and then there were a couple of, eh, performances, um, I mean, Barbara is obviously the most that everyone talks about, she is the most hated character in the first season. Um, just it felt like somebody was just pulling her strings the whole season. It's like, oh, I'm gonna go over here and do this. Oh no, I'm I'm gonna come over here. And just, I mean, it just felt like she was being controlled by some, you know, terrible writer. Uh, but you know, she was okay. But the, I mean, the final few episodes where she was like just sitting there. I mean, that was the look on her face for most just dead eyes. It was like there was nothing there. She was just a completely shell of a person. Um, and then, you know, there were some problems with uh, Jada Smith, uh, Will Smith's wife character, uh, Fish Mooney. I, I didn't have that much of a problem with her. She was kind of, she was a little over the top sometimes, but it felt like a comic book character. You know, and that's one of the things that I've loved about the acting in the show is that it feels like it's a little silly and a little fun, but it's comic book fun. It's comic book silly. And I like that, you know, because some, you know, you look at the the Dark Knight or, you know, the, well, the Dark Knight trilogy, you look at Man of Steel, and they've really taken comic book silly and kind of taken it out of it. And it's just all serious. But anyway, um... So Gotham second season is now five episodes in, so I'm going to try to run through all five of them really fast. Uh, the first three episodes, I think, really hit their stride. Uh, and here's why. 
for one, they brought in a new character. One new character that was very interesting. They brought in a couple other characters that were not as interesting. Um, and that is Theo Gallivan. Uh, he's, I can't remember the actor's name, but I've seen him in so many things. He's, you know, he always plays kind of that upstanding but evil guy. Uh, I think I've seen him in, in like Burn Notice a couple of times. Um, but he, you can tell he's got backstory. And uh, in fact, this last night's episode kind of told the backstory and why he's doing most of what he's doing. Um, but he's, he's almost like the evil Ra's al Ghul. Uh, to me, because Ra's al Ghul always talked about cleansing Gotham of the evil and stuff, and he talks about cleansing Gotham too, but it's of everything good. And uh, you could tell he wanted power, uh, just from, you know, creating chaos and being the one to stop the chaos. Now he's running for mayor, so you can kind of see that he does have an agenda, but it's kind of hard to figure out. It's not something that just like, oh, okay, yeah, that, I can figure that out easy. Um, and when Penguin finally figures it out uh, in the last episode. It was it was very interesting. I do like how they're kind of almost going for a uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet, you know, family feud type thing um, between him and the Waynes. Um, but he's he's been very interesting to watch. Second reason it's been very the first three episodes are really good. They brought back Jerome, and I gotta tell you, watching the previews leading up into the season, that was the number one thing that got me excited for the second season because he was one of the standout performances from the first season even though he was only in one episode he still just caught my attention Cameron Monaghan as little Joker you know teenage Joker it was perfect um, he got the laugh he kind of combined a couple of different Jokers together uh, and it was just it was such a fun performance and every time he was on screen I was smiling and that was that was the whole point of his character was that laughter is power, and he was just he captured the role so well. Um, really, really disappointed that they killed him off in the third episode. Um, but for one, I was a little hesitant to take this story because for one, the Joker has always been shrouded in mystery. Like, you never know his backstory. And here, you still don't know why he's crazy, but you see who his parents are. And so it's like, but this doesn't feel like the Joker, in all honesty. You know, he, he looked and talked like the Joker, but it didn't feel like it because you knew who he was. And the Joker's always been a mystery. So killing him off and having him being, like, the influence for the future Joker was clever, but at the same time, I did want to see more of Jerome on screen because he just, he brought it up. He made Gotham good. Uh, it made it fun. It made it exciting. And just, it had me smiling and laughing the whole time. So, um, and third, they, they did better with Barbara this season. Um, she's still kind of, you know, being used as just a sex object. It's like, oh, look, she's making out with another girl. It's sexy, guys. Um, so she's still being used like that. But she actually has a bit more of a character now. Uh, the scene in the alleyway with Jim where the guy's, like, beating on him, and then she, like, you know, climbs over top of him and, like, you better go inside and see what you missed. And it's just, she almost felt like a, the Harley Quinn to Jerome. Um... She was a little. She's a little bit psychotic now, and I like it. Um, then again, you do wonder how Jim is going to name his daughter after her, because uh, at this point, it's like, why would you name your daughter after the psychopath that's trying to kill you and your girlfriend? Um, so it'll be interesting to see where they take that. Uh, but we'll review the episode really fast. Uh, the first episode, obviously, kind of a you know, what's, what's been happening. Um, it shows, you know, Barbara going to jail, meeting with all of these guys. It shows, you know, introduction of Theo Gallivan and his sister Tabitha, who her whole point is just to dress up in sexy leather outfits and, you know, hey, look, guys, more sex, more sex, um, which is probably my biggest complaint about this show. You don't need that. Um, and, yeah, make, make me seem like a prude, but you know what? 
if your show is exciting enough and your show is fun enough, you don't need to throw in all the, oh, look, sexy, it's all sexy, yeah. Because then it just feels like you're just, it, it feels like a tactic to try to get people to watch your show more. And that's, I think that's, a lot of people have caught on to that tactic. Because um, I see it all the time now. You know, just women dressed up sexy and they throw the word sexy and big lights. And it's like, I don't want to watch that show now. Because now it just feels like you're trying to get me to watch it because your show's not good enough to capture my attention by itself. Um, so, you know, she, she's obviously kind of, you know, crazy too. She, you know, one of her first actions is whipping, uh, Black Mask Dad, Sionis, um, around the throat and just stabbing the crap out of him. And she has, like, this crazy look on her face. So she's a typical psychopath, but she's also just there to wear this, the tight leather outfits. Um... But so you, you get introduced to them. Um, obviously they have the prison break. Uh, I do I do kind of like the fact that Jim had to go to Penguin for help. Because the first season was very much him not doing anything bad. Like even when they thought he did something bad, he really didn't. And it was just kind of the same old formula, you know. Oh, Jim, why don't you do this? It would be much easier, but it's bad. But everybody else is doing it. Um, it felt like a typical, you know, after school special, you know, hey, do drugs, but everybody else is doing it, but I shouldn't. And so it was kind of nice to see him finally kind of break after, uh, after he, you know, got fired from his job. Um, Commissioner Lowe finally just found a way, uh, even though it was the dumbest way possible, only in Gotham would you get kicked off the force for a little push. On a, on a fellow police officer, but, you know, yeah, whatever it takes to forward the plot, I guess. Um, but it was nice to see him kind of finally give in, uh, go to Penguin for help, and then end up doing, you know, a job for Penguin. Uh, collected a debt, accidentally killed a guy because the guy was shooting at him. So that was kind of interesting. Um, and obviously, more of Penguin, uh, more of Victor's ass, which, I mean, the guy that plays him was just... He looks the part. He's got the big bug eyes, and he's got, you know, just straight up bald. And he just has this crazy look on his face at all times, which is awesome. Um, but, you know, they break into his house and threat him. <laughs> and uh, just some of the funny lines. Penguin's sitting there like, you know, you know, you could. Nah, never mind. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do it. And he's like, what? I'll do it. I'll do it. And obviously, he gets him to quit. Um... And then uh, the woman, Essen, uh, she ends up taking over as commissioner. Uh, and obviously, she and Jim have been friends, so it's kind of like, you know, Jim's job is now secure. And uh, it, I like that. It, it you know, it, it does help forward the plot. So there were some problems, but at the same time, I do like where the story is going after the first one. The second one, so much better. Uh, more of Jerome, just. You know, that, that one scene where uh, he and the, the guy that was eating all the women that he killed, uh, they were talking about who's going to be in charge. And, you know, they, they'd had the, uh, say, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, earlier. And, you know, obviously Jerome just killed it like his, you know, future Joker would do. Um, and they had the scene with the gun doing Russian roulette. And he just, he gets closer and closer to him. He's like... What is the point of comedy? Timing! And just watching him do that, it felt like just all of the jokers there. It felt like the creep of Heath Ledger's Joker, but it also felt like the silliness of uh, Jack Nicholson's Joker. And he's got, he has that Mark Hamill voice, but it sounds a bit younger. And I love it. Like the, the laugh is there, the voice is there. It's just, it was perfect. It was dead on perfect. Um, he really, I mean, the smile too, it just looks so creepy. Um, so the has gone. But anyway, so obviously, you know, they, the maniacs, as they call themselves, with an X, which that, that scene outside the, the paper company where they drop the buys off and they happen to spell maniacs, I'm like, yeah, because you can definitely make it that accurate from that high up because they don't bounce at all. They just 
explained, and that's it. Um, so, you know, suspension of disbelief, it's, it's gone. Um, but other than that, you know, fairly straightforward episode as far as, you know, Jim and the police department are going after the maniacs up until the very end. The very end is where I really got excited about this season. It's the the point where Barbara comes in and she's, she had just been talking to Jim on the phone. She comes in to the police station and Jim follows her out to the alley. He starts getting his butt kicked. Um, and then Jerome and the rest of the maniacs and then some of their henchmen come in dressed as cops and start just shooting up the place. And it's fantastic. Um, just the look on his face. It, it, it sounds weird to say. It's fantastic when you're talking about the bad guys getting one over on the good guys. But man, I mean, the way they handle that scene, um, you know, it's a it's a big scene to have so many cops killed right there. I mean, it's huge, and obviously, you know, they have more cops that come in later. Um, but man, I mean, just the way they did it, it just it was kind of out of nowhere. Uh, and so many cops getting killed. Jerome is there, looking like the Joker. Um, and you know he has just another great scene as the Joker. Um, you know he's sitting there talking to her, and uh, the the cannibal guy again, you know, kind of tries to one up him and steals his line, uh, something about laughter is power or something. And uh, he you know shoots him and says, "My line." And it just it was perfect. Um, and then he gets really close to S N. He's kind of talking to her about you know the future. And uh, she's you know trying to tell him that once he dies nobody will remember him. Um, she spits in his face. He's like, I actually kind of enjoy that. Do it again. And she headbutts him in the face. And the way he, it, it was kind of like a little Matrix thing. He goes backwards and you know you can't see his face. And he's back in her face. He's like, oh my turn. He's got blood running down. Pot on again. Um, and I know I keep saying that. I know I keep talking about him, but. Man, he was the highlight of this season so far. Um, and, you know, Jim's out in the alleyway, and like I said, probably one of uh, Barbara's standout performances. Um, you know, just the look on her face, she actually has a look on her face this time. It's not just a, what's going on? It's a psychotic look. Like, she's almost kind of half smiling as she watched Jim get the beat. You know, get the crap beat out of them. Um, so, you know, Essen ends up dying by uh, Jerome's hand, and uh, Harvey comes back, and then of course they have the the scene that they were showing in the previews leading up to the season where Jerome's on camera, and once again he led your Joker right there. Uh, if you remember from the Dark Knight, watching him and the camera as he's sitting there talking to everybody, he's up close and he's kind of. And he's up close again, and he's really far away. Um, so once again, completely captured the Joker. Um, and that's how C uh, episode two ends. Episode three is kind of like, it's the mission. You know, now they have to stop the maniacs. And of course, as all Batman parodies go, um, the ma majority of this takes place at a charity. Um, and I think, I guess, Jerome kind of is the one that, started that because uh, we know going forward several charities end up getting attacked by several people um, and so you know this one it, it was still good but it wasn't as engaging um, as the last one mainly because seeing Jerome kind of you know start is really what got going um, it's still really good. Like, it's still way better than anything in the first season. Um, and, you know, still a good bit of Jerome. Uh, he really kind of still captures it. Uh, Barbara's still completely psychopath. But there were just, there were a lot of things in this one that made me go, come on, like, you were doing so well, and now we're having these weird moments. Um, a couple of the ones that I'm thinking of is, uh, Barbara's talking to uh, Lee, Jim's girlfriend, um, while they're at the, you know, they're on stage, they've already revealed themselves, 
And she's just sitting there talking to her. And I'm just like, it just feels unnatural. Like, you're in a room full of people. Jerome was just talking to everybody. And then all of a sudden it cuts to the side and she's having a little conversation that is the center of attention. Like, nobody else is talking. I'm like, that feels a little bit forced. And then uh, Theo Galvan, as much as I love his character so far, whenever he's pretending to be good guy Galavan, it's like, it doesn't feel like a good guy. Like, he gets up there, and he's like, and Jerome's asks him, who are you? And he looks at the camera, I'm Theo Galavan. I'm like, couldn't you do better? <laughs> I, I, I get that he, you know, maybe he's part of his character, I don't know, but he's so overdramatic that it's almost like, you can tell he's not a good guy. Uh, even, obviously the audience knows, but even if you weren't the audience, like he still feels like he's rehearsed everything. Like he looks like he's rehearsed everything. The way he looks at the camera, everything he says sounds rehearsed. So, you know, those are, like I said, episodes still better than the first season. Um, but, you know, you get more of Barbara and Tabitha together, um, just to try to increase the sex appeal for guys. Um, so, you know, more, more problems than the second episode, but at the same time, still a lot of good parts. Um, I, I loved seeing Alfred hit on, uh, Lee, uh, when he first meets her, and then, you know, at the end of it, <laughs> Jim and Lee are kissing, and he's like, oh, fuck, that was great. Um, and of course, you know, a little bit of him and Bruce, you know, interacting, you know, you knew, didn't you? And he's like, I swear I didn't, Alfred. That, that's great. More Bruce, Bruce and Alfred is, it's, it's funny. Uh, I do enjoy it. Um, what else, what else, what else? Like I said, I mean, this, it's the end of Jerome. So, that was another downside, I guess, for me. Mainly because I did want to see more of uh, Cameron Monaghan as the Joker. He just, he was the highlight of this season so far. And to see him go out three episodes in is kind of like, where are you going to go from here? Um, and that has been shown in fourth and fifth episodes. Like, it just doesn't feel as strong as the first three. So, you know, all that stuff. Theo Galavan obviously putting his plan into place. Um killing Jerome to make him look like the good guy. Uh, it's kind of typical, you know, guys looking for power. Um, but I still I still am interested with his story, though, so he's still got that going for him. Um, but that, I mean, that was most of episode three right there. Um, it really, you know, there were good parts, there were bad parts. Um, still way better than the first season, like I said. Uh, episode 4 is where it kind of dips back into the same old cliches as episode 1. Um, they've got a new commissioner now, uh, played by the guy that played the thing in the Fantastic Four movie, so it was nice to see him kind of get a, a role uh, where we actually might like him. Um, but he's just the typical commissioner that he comes in and he's just changing everything you know, everything was kind of dirty and shadows, and he's like, I'm bringing it all to light, and you can already see where this is going, because Jim did a job for the penguin where he killed a guy, um, I'm sure that's going to come back later, and eventually the commissioner's going to find out about it, either, you know, Harvey's going to help him out and get him out of it, or Jim's going to have to come face to face with it, so, either way, I've seen it done a hundred thousand times, um, so, I do hate that they're kind of going cliche route again, um, but they they bring in this strike force um, of all these like talented young people, you know, probably early twenties, uh, but they bring them in to kind of take the war for Gotham to, to the light. Uh, so instead of it being where the, the bad guys are running everything, well now the good guys are gonna step in, and they're going to take it to them, and they're going to do it all. Um, so, you know, it's, I've seen it done, and that's why it's kind of disappointing to see them 
take what they had going so well and kill off Jerome, and now they're stepping back into what they had first season. Um, it, it really, I, I don't remember much about the episode. Uh, even, I watched the fifth episode today, I taped it from last night, um, and just, I couldn't remember the fourth episode at all. I remembered them getting the strike force together, I remembered and they had stuff about Penguin, but even then it's like, it's not the Penguin that I've come to know. You know, it's Penguin like all paranoid and, oh no, they've got my mother and, oh, what am I supposed to do? And almost crying. And I'm just like, I hope this is an act because the Penguin that I know would not get this worked up about it. He would find a way to retaliate and he would do it. He would retaliate and he would take it, take it back to them. Which he does in the fifth episode, so. Um, but yeah, just really forgettable episode. Bringing together all the strike force, obviously, is going to play into future episodes, because now Jim has like a little team that he runs. Um, but obviously, setting up for cliche uh, fights later between Jim and the new commissioner. Um, so, on to the fifth episode. It's it's another better than the first season, I guess. Um, they introduce the Firefly, but it's not you know it's not Garfield Lens from the comics. It's actually this little family of arsonists um, that I guess I don't know if they're going to inspire the Firefly later or if this is their Firefly. I don't know. Um, I would like them to take a few liberties of their own, like they did with Jerome. Um, because I, I don't know, I want it to feel like, obviously you want to pay homage to future Batman, you want to pay homage to the movies, the TV show, all that stuff, but I would like to see them go a little bit different, because that was probably one of the things that I read most about the first season, was that it was just so cliche, and it was set up for the future, and it was... You know, oh look, it's the Joker. Oh look, it's the Riddler. Oh look at that. So I I do understand that. Um, I do want them to throw in a few surprises. You know, like a girl Firefly. That's interesting. Um, now whether she's the real Firefly or not, we'll see. Um, but you know, more stuff with uh, Theo and Penguin. You know, trying to further his campaign as mayor. Uh, already taking out the two other. Uh, what's it called? Candidates. And then took a shot at him, so now he's kind of like the... He's the survivor. Uh, more stuff with him, uh, trying to kind of gain control of everything. And I like it. It's okay. Uh, he goes to Jim to see if he will sponsor him for mayor, because if the police uh, president does it, well then... He'll have the backing of all the police department. And that's, you know, he, he could use that right now. Once again, I don't like him acting like a good guy. It's, it's just so, I'm, 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 I'm a good guy. See, I, I look at the right times. I say the right things. I'm a good guy. It's just, it's so goofy looking that, it's hard to imagine that you couldn't tell he was a bad guy. Um, so, once again, stuff happens. Uh, Theo has Penguin's mother, and he's getting him to do stuff for him. And so Penguin gets these arsonists, uh, their little family of three and then one sister. Uh, I'm sorry, three brothers and one sister. And, you know, it's interesting, I guess. Uh, Jim and the Strike Force take out one of Penguin's uh, money places, and then they go to the store where, you know, he's selling all most of his arms, uh, you know, guns, explosives, all that stuff. And the youngest brother of the arsonist is there, and they, you know, chase him outside, and he pulls a gun, they shoot him a bunch of times, and I guess they hit an explosive or something, and he just blows up, which probably was the best scene. Um, it was just, it was intense. Uh, 
So, of course, because he was the youngest and the smallest, now they have to find a replacement. And so, you know, the, the two older Arsonist brothers get the sister to agree to, and she's kind of, you know, she, typical uh, sister that just, you know, getting beat up by two older brothers. Is, she doesn't want to argue with them. She's a little bit timid and... I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm not really family, and the the two brothers are just the typical jerks. Um, and you know, there was an interesting scene with her and uh, Selena, which I forgot to mention her. But man, she looks almost exactly like Michelle Pfeiffer at a young age. Uh, she's she's one that kind of was in and out in the first season. I liked it when she was in. I didn't really notice when she wasn't there, so she was back and forth as far as a good character goes. But there was a really good scene between Selena and the younger sister, I think her name was Bridget, uh, just about you know, how they, you could tell they have a friendship history from when they were younger, um, and just learning a bit of backstory about Selena, very interesting. Um, in the end, though, she ends up uh, Bridget ends up making the Firefly costume because she gets burnt at the first, what's it called, explosion. Uh, Mom's that she said she doesn't get out of there fast enough because her brothers are being jerks to her. And so she gets burnt on her leg, and so she makes the Firefly costume uh, with the face mask. She gets a flamethrower and everything. And so you know, that's setting up into next week. She ends up killing one of the Strike Force guys. Can't remember his name. Um, I really, really wish they would just... Because, you know, a, a guy died. A, a cop died. And so they're all sitting there, they're like, he was a good cop. We're, we're going to get him back for this. And as a, as a person watching it, I don't feel that emotion at all. Because they made him so forgettable. <laughs> he was in for one episode, and now he's dead, and I'm like, I don't even remember his name, like, they just, they rushed it so much that you don't feel that emotion there, where they're sitting there talking about how we gotta do it for him, you don't feel that as a, as an audience member, and that's a really big problem for me, that they need to really try to work on, because they don't handle their characters very well, um, <laughs> A.K.A. Barbara. So, you know, that's pretty much the end of that storyline until next episode. Obviously, Firefly is going to be the um, big point of the next episode. But we did have more of Theo's backstory, like I said earlier. Uh, find out that his family and the Wayne family were at odds um, several, several years ago. And the Waynes ended up getting them kicked out of Gotham. And pretty much shamed their family to where they had to change their name from something, I can't remember, to Galavan. Uh, and so the whole point behind this, and suddenly it makes sense why Jerome, you know, it was like, why is he getting Bruce up there? Like, he doesn't really know him. You know, why does it have to be Bruce Wayne? Well, now, now you know, because Galavan wants to kill Bruce Wayne. And, uh... He met with some priest-looking guy. I, he just kind of showed up out of nowhere. And they were like, we will kill Bruce Wayne. And you're like, okay, this can be interesting. You know, now it's it's tying everything together. Whereas in the first season, everything was so separate. You know, the cases that Jim and Harvey were on, the stuff with Penguin, the stuff with Fish, the stuff with Bruce, it was all over the place. And you couldn't really keep up with everything. Well, now... It's all kind of connected um, to where I wonder if you know they've been working on Bruce's dad's computer uh, that that they found at the end of last season, and uh, I kind of wonder if that's going to be connected to the Galavans at all. Like if they're going to find out about Theo. So they've been setting up a lot. Um, still love the first three episodes because of Jerome. Hate that he's gone. Uh, Barbara's looking better. Penguin's still awesome. Uh, Robin Lord Taylor just 
really nails that performance. Uh, definitely the highlight of the first season for sure. So the story's still a little bit weak, but it's getting better. It's definitely better than the first season, uh, which, let's be honest, didn't really have much of a story. But you know, acting's still there. Uh, the excitement is still kind of there. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Um, so that that is my first TV review. Uh, I have several more coming. Uh, several episodes in already for some of them, so I'm going to have to rush through a lot of episodes and reviews. Uh, this is not really what my channel will be in the future, I hope. Uh, if you can tell by the quality, I'm having to shoot this off of my laptop. But once I get more you know, quality stuff, because it's kind of broke right now, um, I'm hoping to talk a bit more about you know, some of my other passions. Uh, obviously by my shirt, video game nerd. Um, so I do have a lot of uh, other stuff to talk about. So hopefully you guys enjoy this review. Um, I will probably have a few more uploaded very soon because I've got a lot of shows that I watch, so I've got a lot to get through. And I would like to get to them before the next episode comes out, so I will be able to devote more time to uh, each indiv ind individual episode. So, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next review.